I think one of the key differentiator in Ambrosius is we're trying to build the, the building blocks, uh, the ecosystem uh, around that, the underlying technology infrastructure, if you want, first, so that other people can come, the developers from all over around the world, they can build on top of Ambrosius new verticals themselves and monetize that. Well, hello, Vlad, and thank you very much for joining Duke Scobie TV. It's a pleasure and, uh, to have you in our studio. How are you? All right, perfect. Just found the place finally, so <laughs> happy to be here. Um, yeah, we're going to talk and you're going to introduce us to your company today, which is Ambrosus. Yeah. So let's just start off with telling us the mission of your company. Sure. So, I mean, the, the whole world, if you look at digital technology now, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, that appears massively, that gets redeployed. But when you look at the state of businesses, industries, especially how they work with each other, they supply each other, a lot of that is still very analog. And it's not really leveraging those new technologies. It's not really taking advantages of, of how you can optimize transportation and things like that. So that's really our, our mission was how can we use the latest technologies to make trade much more efficient, especially in the context of food manufacturing, pharma manufacturing, supply chain management, it's a perfect example. So that's really where we came from. We wanted to use things like blockchain technology, Internet of Things sensors, and to make supply chains much more transparent and efficient. Mm -hmm. So using blockchain for tracking supply chain is being done by quite a few big enterprises such as IBM. Yeah. What makes your approach unique? Sure. Uh, I think if you look at the, the, the approach big companies are taking, they're developing huge uh, solutions, very specific for one type of industries, really vertical. I think one of the key differentiators in Ambrosius is we're trying to build the, the building blocks, uh, the ecosystem uh, around that, the underlying technology infrastructure, if you want, first, so that other people can come, the developers from all over around the world, they can build on top of Ambrosius new verticals themselves and monetize that. So that's a very unique approach. The other approach as well is uh, is really strongly integrating things like the Internet of Things, sensors, devices, and applying that in, in the context such as pharma, for example, or, or many others. And I think uh, we have a huge background in the whole Internet of Things space. We've been that, in that space for more than 10 years, at least me personally. So that's one of the things where which we really believe in is the combination of blockchain plus real world data to obtain all this real time transparency and getting the best out of uh, things like smart contracts, for example, because you get real time data and you can immediately react to, to problems. You can immediately detect those things in your supply chain and minimize the, the, the cost of problems or minimize the cost uh, it takes you to get compliant because you can prove very quickly to, to authorities or to your customers that everything you've done was according to, to some very clearly specified uh, instruction or regulations. Mm -hmm. So what is the unique aspects of your sensor systems development? Can you just talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, of course. So <clears throat> that's that's uh, essentially we have two pillars. One is the software, which I just mentioned. It's the software infrastructure. On top of that, we're engaging more and more in, in R&D projects with universities. Uh, we, we both explore what's out there on the market, such as you see in the picture. That's a lot of things you can buy off the shelf today. Many of them are good, but they're very general purpose. And when you take those devices and you want to adapt that to, to a very specific type of product, uh, then you need to do a lot of development. So what we're trying to do essentially is to, is to put together off-the-shelf sensors that we do with partners that companies can take, very quickly adapt and integrate new sorts of sensors. Um, We're ex also exploring things like printed electronics, uh, new MEMS type of, uh, of sensors, and have that information directly flow into, into Ambrosius. Because it's not just about having data, because you can easily measure data, but it's also about the trust uh, you have around that data, which requires first protecting the sensors, then the, the, the case, if you want. If I'm sending you a, a box of, ship, of fish, for example, how, even if I put a sensor in it, how can I guarantee that no one tampered with it? How can I guarantee that no one opened the box? Uh, how do I know that the product I'm measuring hasn't been 
change somewhere in the transportation. So we're looking at new things such as, you know, almost DNA level where you can analyze, okay, has the chemical properties or the biological properties of the thing change or not? That's, that's one of the things we're looking at. But there's so much uh, exciting research being done and a lot of that is still in labs. We work very closely with ETH Zurich or EPFL uh, and our goal is really to get those new developments when they're gonna be ready for, for the market in two, three years time. We're already working with them, trying to integrate them today so that when they're ready, our customers can directly benefit from them if they're using something like Ambrosius uh, underneath. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Uh, these uh, amber tokens, the the use of them in this particular ecosystem, and uh, yeah, how, how you can use them. Of course. So one of the concepts we, we we came up with was really think through why do you need a token? Because you see a lot of uh, you know projects around blockchain that just create a token, and it doesn't always make sense. So we really come up with something that we call data bounded token, and the idea is that you're using the existence of token, the flow of, of tokens that uh, we're using that so that you can trace a product uh, as it moves throughout the supply chain. So say a farmer, for example declares a one ton uh, of organic strawberries, he would lock a certain amount of embers with, the, with that batch of strawberries. And as it moves, it gets split into smaller batches, into boxes. So the, the, the initial amount of tokens get split as well and travel through as those products get transformed. So at the end of the, of the chain, when the consumer buys a product, it can be a yogurt that contains those strawberries, he, there is still a small amount of embers in that, in that pot. And part of that, can he can keep them, part of that can go back to the manufacturer or even to, to the producer that declared the strawberries in the first place. And that really plays a nice, nice story around the whole uh, social corporate responsibilities of, of our customers. They want to be able to prove that, yes, 5% of our revenue literally went into, into the farmers we work with. And here we provide them a, a tool to do that. Well, Vlad, thank you very much for speaking with us today. It was a real pleasure, pleasure and uh, hopefully see you again soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot. And uh, thank you for watching. If you like this interview and would like to find out more, be sure to head over to dukascopy.tv.